Hi everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. Today, I've just got a quick tutorial, hopefully quick, on um, doing this dragon's claw or crow's foot or whatever you want to call it. Now, this particular one, I did with this black evil primo. I actually got this off of Amazon, which I don't suggest buying your clay off of Amazon, only because you've got no guarantee how fresh it is. I would suggest buying your clay if you're going to buy it online buy it from a reputable clay store I buy mine from
Okay, with a little lot on my help. Okay, I'm just going to continue on and do the rest of the toes. Okay, now I've just got my needle tool. Which is actually not something I use that often, but... Just to add a little bit of detail. Just don't do, just don't do the lines straight across. That won't give you the effect you're going for. That will be the claw on the end. We'll detail that. Okay. So again, I'll just go along on every toe. will be a bit tedious but it will be well worth it in the end okay so I'm just gonna carry on and I'll be back okay now I'm going to continue up the hand or the claw or the foot the foot that's what I should say Again, don't just go round and round with the lines. Take a take a look at your hand. How the lines don't go all the way. They crisscross. Now, the first one I did, I believe, was silver. The second one I did, that I believe is still in the shop, was gold. And I think it has a red stone in its foot. Okay, now, before we even lift it up, we're going to put a jump ring on the end. Now, there is nothing new about this. Okay, this might actually be a little bit much. Okay. I've just got a small amount. I've got my jump ring and I'm going to take it where you can hardly see it where the split is that is the part I'm going to put down okay so I just 
threaded that little bit of clay through the jump ring and folded it over. Now, just to make this easier on myself, so I say before I try to squeeze the bacon bond, I just literally stuck it on the end. Now, I'm going to form it onto the rest of the piece. I'm just going to take something like my knitting needle and I'm going to press down on the fold. I'll try to show you what I mean. Okay, just so it doesn't cover up the center of the jump ring too much. Okay, then you could actually carry on and do the rest of the hand detail. Up the jump ring, or up the the bale, we'll call it. Okay. Take my blade. And very gently go underneath. Okay. Now, you can either fill in with some more clay, which I will do here and here. But very carefully. So as not to ruin all the detail we just put on the other side. As I always say, you got to learn a light touch if you're gonna work with clay that's the most important thing I can tell you a light touch okay now I'm just gonna roll a little Log of clay, snake of clay, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. And 
cut it off to fit. Now, you may not have nails and you may have to use a craft knife or something, but that's okay. Sorry if I was off camera. Okay, how it looks underneath is not important because that is going to be next to the bead. Okay, so we want to tr start forming the hand around. Sorry, a little bacon bond would work. Or a little translucent sculpey, that might be the ticket. So close to the bottom now. Okay, let's see. I want the hole holes to be covered up by the Claws. Here it is out of the oven. And a lot more of the places where you slice and stuff in the gold will show up. So I've just got some of the Prima waxes. These are the Prima Finnabar waxes. These are the metallic line. Just had to check to make sure. <laughs> now you may not have these, but any type of wax product will work. Rub and buff or Inca Gold or um, the Deco Art Metallic Luster. I love that stuff. Now you know, notoriously, I don't, <laughs> I don't really care for the gold and silver. They look alright when they're mixed, but when you just use them alone, they have a very flat um, color. <sighs> Sorry, the copper is hard to open. And as I'm always saying, here in Texas, it really gets hot, so. The waxes will start to separate. Sorry, this was <laughs> the vintage gold, the rich copper, 
and this is the Bronze Age. Which I'm always talking about. I get it confused with one of my vintage silk. I've got two vintage silk and one of them looks very similar to this. It says Opal Magic, Vintage Silk, and everything, but the coloration of the background will throw you for a loop for sure. The other one just looks fine. So, I just dusted on a little bit of the wax, and I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll come back and give it a buff, and give it a coat of sealer. This um, project like this in particular, it, it wouldn't do you any good to sand it and buff it, so a good sealer is, um, it will really bring the color out and the shine back up so I'll be back okay I've just got a cloth napkin just picked it up at a yard sale <gasps> and I'm gonna just buff this and a lot of it will come off that's all right This is actually, <laughs> it used to have a red side and a blue side. Just trying to keep it separate. Okay, now you can see that it didn't wipe it all away. Okay. So now I'm just going to I've got this Varathane which I'm sorry I can't tell you where I got it from because I think about the last bottle. Okay, sorry. The lid still won't come off. Oh yeah, okay, thank you so much. Nothing like it being difficult, is there? Okay, I just got a, a soft round brush. And I'm just gonna Paint it on. Now, the key to not getting brush strokes is to flood the whole surface. Alright, you can see that is pretty flooded. It's not dripping.
Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it everywhere. <laughs> Including on me. So, I've showed this before. And it's filthy and dusty and all like that. But it's also very handy. Okay, I'll just leave that to set and dry. And then I'll be back. Okay, here it is. All dried. You could uh, add it. Another coat of wax if you want. Yes, the wax will stick to the glazed surface and it is permanent. So, there you go. Quick little dragon's claw. Now, the first ones that I made were quite a bit smaller. As you can see, the flooding, the piece with the sealer worked wonderfully. No brush strokes, no bubbles, no nothing. Okay. Alright. So, please like, share, and subscribe. All the links to my social media are listed below. I've got an Etsy shop if you want to go by and check it out. Look me up on Facebook if you want to join. I've got a Lens Crafts page, a Lens Crafts Designs page. Bye for now.